I'm on tonight and then my hips don't lie and I'm starting to feel it smooch. Welcome to another episode of Smoochie Town. And before we get to our very funny guest, this guy's a fire fucking cracker. It's a smooch of the week and it's not the smooch of the week, guys. I'm lying. It's a PSA, a public smoochie announcement. So if you follow the podcast, if you've been watching my clips, uh, there's a lot of smoochies happening in my life. Threesome stories, girls faking orgasms, you know, you name it, I've smooched it. But now I want to find my permanent smooch, my number one smooch of the life. I want a girlfriend. And I feel like if I keep talking about bad dates, about random smoochies, then no girls are going to take me seriously. So this is a PSA for all the women watching the podcast or guys out there. I don't want to smooch you, but if you have a girl, you get it. Um, I want a smoochie. I want a smoochie to call my own, to lay next to at night, to tell good stories too. So if you're out there, if you're listening to this, I'm looking for you. So comment, maybe go to my website, smoochytown.com, fill out a brief survey, I want height, bus size, everything. Uh, but yeah, so that was my PSA. And now, now we're done with smooches of the week. It's all about good, wholesome family fun from here on out on Smoochie Town. So having said that, our guest this week, he is funny, he's handsome, and he's drinking a happy dad. It's Luke. No. What up? What up? Hey. Looking for smooches too from my wife. Love it, honey. I'll see you. Get a little like ring on it. Okay, Beyonce. Yeah, I like to do this. I like to wear it. a little hardware, as they say. Nice. I'm excited dude. that you're you're blasting it to your audience, where you're like. To my audience of 99% dudes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, the six women out there, hit me up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all those women just want something fun. They don't want anything serious. That's right. You're like, not, yeah, exactly. Now, here's the thing. I feel like you, you introed me as a, as, a, as a handsome devil. I don't know if you felt like this. You're from Boston. Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. So, yeah. Okay. So, like. The, the New Jersey to uh, New York. Yeah. Uh, Boston. <laughs> yes. I've yeah. been to Providence. I've yeah. been to Providence. A little more drugs. A little more drugs in Providence. A little more drugs in only some of the colleges. Yeah. You know <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like Boston, it's like lots of lots of backwards hat guys named Kyle. Yeah. Lots of colleges that you're like, where's that college? It's in Boston. It's you in don't Boston. know where it is. It's in Boston. It's in Boston. Uh, but I don't know if in, in Providence, like in Providence, are you like 10 out of 10, the biggest hunk in town? Yeah. I know, what you mean. <laughs> no. I know, but I know, but but you, but what I'm getting at is like in LA, I'm like I'm a dog, I'm a gremlin in LA. No, you're not. No, but I'm, I mean, I'm not fishing, but I'm saying like in Cincinnati, what's up? I'm, oh, I'm, you're I'm like nine. you're the talk of the town. Totally. Yeah, not really, I'm, but I'm like in Cincinnati, I'm like I'm, I'm doing all right, I'm doing pretty good. And then you get here and you're like you're a little dog. You're a little doggy. You're a little you're a little, you're a little gremlin. Yorkie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I, a little I, a grubby little piss pig. As we say. <laughs> oh, oink and oink. Then, <laughs> Grumpy yeah. little PP. Sh shout out to the grubby little piss pigs. Uh, at Happy, no, <laughs> Happy Dad. <laughs> Happy Dad. Shout out Happy Dad. We'll start off with the Happy Dad segment. I'm here for this. I'm here for the sponsor more than Happy anything. Dad segment. Right. Uh, what's your relationship like with your dad? My dad likes the sauce. I'll tell you what. <laughs> he, and he runs his mouth. He runs. Oh, his mouth. really? My dad he's runs. He's oinking his around mouth. town. He oinks around town. Ever since he had a brush with death, he's kind of gone into fuck it mode. He had um, what was the, what was back the in 2017, he had pancreatic cancer and he survived, which <laughs> <laughs> that's, fucked up. that's dark. That's fucked up. But it's, he survived and now he's like in full blown party mode, party mode. Fuck it. Really? Yeah. So instead yeah. of like going a healthier route and making sure nope. that doesn't happen again. The opposite. Yeah. He's living, <laughs> he's living for today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And because of that, he's, uh, yeah, he's running his mouth a lot in bars and stuff. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is, do you, is your mom still in the picture? Mom's still in the picture. Same, Letting him do it? Same story. <laughs> Cancer. A little chatterbox. Fuck it. Too. Yeah. They're both like just going to die. And so, uh, but they're in, from alcohol overdose rather than like a golf ball growing inside of them. Yeah. Okay. Very you know cool. what I mean? But yeah, they're, get, you know, fun time during the holidays, but. My brother, who still lives in, in Cincinnati, he's like, I don't go drinking with them anymore. He's like, really? He's like, I've, they've gotten kicked out of bars. Like, <laughs> no way. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. How often do you go back to Cincinnati to visit? Because that's where you grew up? It is. Throughout, yeah, I grew up there. Um, my, bro it? my brother lives there now. It's a lot. Cincinnati's a lot cooler of a town than when I lived there. Okay. Like, I left, at, you know, after college. But, like, my brother lives there now. And every time I go back and visit, I'm like, dang. 
This is fun. Really? Yeah, it's a good time. Do you think Joe Burrow uh, kind of revamped it? You know what? Joe Burrow de- definitely did a little syringe juicing of yeah. uh, some some life. In and out of the locker room. In and out of the locker Yeah, he's full blown. Yeah. Off and juicing. Handsome love, guy. Too. Dude, love Joe. I'll die for him. Have you met him? God, no. I would die. I would be so scared. That's your that's your TB. That's your Tom Brady. That's my that's my TB. Yeah. This I is love also, Tom Brady, This is also dude. sponsored by Tom, Tom Brady, Shawn Mendes. Those are my two guys I'd fuck. Dude, those are two guys you'd fuck? Yeah. I'll tell you or what. Or let me fuck fuck me. Yo, like, no, no. I'm, I, I'm I, verse. Exactly. You're, we're, we're all verse for somebody out there. Seriously. Right? Who's yours? Uh, the first week, people asked me about like the the year that I was at SNL. I was immediately fired. What's up, Lauren? Immediately got fired. <laughs> but but I remember, I, Wait, I'll let you finish, and then I want to dive into that. Book. Totally. But I remember being like, uh, the first week at SNL, I was so nervous. You know, you're meeting all these famous people and all these hosts and stuff. And I remembered uh, you, you can get like the host to come into your little little office to like pitch them sketches and shit. And I remember uh, they brought in um, Ryan Gosling and I was like, oh, I didn't even know I was gay. I did not even know I was gay. I'm gay. <laughs> I was just like, I'm gay. And I'm gay cool. now and <laughs> take off your pants. I don't know exactly how we would do it, but it would definitely, I would, you're, I'm gay now. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be gay for Ryan. Oh, you, you you see that guy in real life, you're like, yeah, yeah. He dresses hot? Yeah, yeah. I'm envisioning him right here walking <laughs> through the store. Uh, he he was the amount of intimidating uh, uh, sexual prowess that when he walked into my office wearing an um, acid-washed jean jacket, I, I immediately, as soon as he left, I bought one. Which <laughs> 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 is really embarrassing, but I was like, Dave, what's up? Hey, man, how's it going? What would the job? What would you pitch him? Uh, I pitched him. Oh, it was so humiliating. I pitched him. Was <laughs> he just like nope? <laughs> oh, it was like way worse than that. He 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 sits down on my little couch and I'm pitching him the sketch. Where I'm like, so I'm like a warden or something, and you are like a death row inmate, and I come and I ask you like, what do you want your last meal to be, and you tell me that you want your last meal to be. Um, Olive Garden's unlimited soup salad. Of <laughs> so that if you keep eating, you know, we can't kill you as long as you're eating breadsticks and as long as you're eating soup. And then like, that's the sketch. And he's sitting there listening to me. He's like, mm-hmm. 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 he goes, you're new here. No way. <laughs> Which was the equivalent of just taking a shotgun. Yeah. And blowing my head off. yeah. <laughs> just like, yes, I'm new here. He's like, yeah, it's going to be fun. Week. It's gonna be fun. Like he just <laughs> wasn't, wasn't here for it at all. He was just like, Okay. Can I go? <laughs> I was like, yep. Did that's you, my idea. Did yeah. you work with him or anything? Any sketches? No, fuck no. I think none of my shit got in the week he was there. No, no, no. So, so how did you get discovered for it? And I'm sure you've told this story a million times, oh, so I you won't in, elaborate uh, on it too much. But. No, I'm, so I'm happy. I was in Chicago. Uh, I was a, That's where I came up comedy-wise. I did lots of sketch and improv stuff on top of stand up but i was in chicago they come at they used to at least every summer they'll come out and see like second city and io in chicago which i was io so yeah they came and saw me you do your like five minutes of you know solo sketch characters yeah i little songy yeah, so yeah, little yeah. songy guy um, you love impressions too right none oh. oh there's a reason why i didn't succeed on that I feel show. like you have to do impressions to be successful on that show. At least it's you some sort. You kind of do now. There, that wasn't always necessarily like Elaine, you know, like, I don't know. You go back to like Chris Farley. Or the, I'm not that I'm saying I'm Chris Farley, but there's plenty of people who've been on there where you're like, he's not known for his impressions. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's he, they Sometimes they would jam him into something, but for the most part, it's like, Character. I was more of a characters kind of guy yeah. rather than impressions. But that's not really the show as much anymore. It's a lot more like impressions will get you a lot further. Yeah. I learned that the hard way where they're like, and what are your impressions? And I was like, I can do Michael McDonald from the Doobie Brothers pretty good. You know, and they're like, oh, that's useless to us. What else? Yeah. I'm like that's I can do a guy with a really small penis. You're like I can do that. I can. I live that. <laughs> I can do a really good impression of that. What was, so how long were you there for? One season. One, one season? season. And yeah. what was like the response when you get fired? Like, how did that come? Oh. Did he bring you in the room? Like, how does it? No. How, how did it all happen? No, it's very impersonal. Like, your agent just calls you and is like, they're not picking you up. It's very impersonal. They're very, like, cloak and dagger about. Oh, there's no, like, going away hiring. party? Absolutely not. I went out like a mouse fart. And then the year after me. <laughs> I, I, like, I went out with, like, a good. I was very nice a in Midwestern. Totally, though. I, and when it happened, I remember being like, 
Man, I wish I had kicked up more dust because the year after me was uh, Shane Gillis. And he kicked up some dust. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, dude, I should have been like, I don't Get know. some notoriety. I should have done for something on the way out. Yeah. But I was one of my, one of the things like uh, they have like a person who buys clothes for you, like at the, at the end of the show where they all come out uh, for good nights. You know, the host is just like, thank you so much. And it's everyone on the stage. Yeah. They'll buy what, clothes. Those aren't your clothes? No. You, it can be, it can be, but they will buy you clothes that they think you would like, right? So, do they buy everyone those dumbass masks too? I, I bet they do. I bet they buy, I mean, they buy so much shit. That show wastes so much fucking money. But they had a whole closet of shit that I, I was like, this is an expensive clothes that I like. And my uh, dresser, whose job it was to like shop and pick things out, was like, meet me on the corner. <laughs> no way. Like when, when, he, when he heard that I got fired and I was like, yeah. And he, bless his heart, he came out with, he had just, just like emptied my closet out. Let's go. Stole all those clothes from me. So what's up, Lauren? Come for me. I stole. I, I took it. I took it. I took all that stuff. Is that jacket? Because that's no, sick no, as fuck. Exactly. My, these Budweiser jacket, this is staying with me. All right. That's I, sick. Dude, I, that was like my, uh, that was for me, it was like kicking some dust up on the way out. I was like, <laughs> stole yeah, all my look, clothes. Look at this 32 by 30 pants. They didn't even notice. <laughs> they didn't even fucking notice. But Do you still, uh, are you still friendly with any of oh, like the cast and totally. stuff? Oh, yeah. Totally, yeah. You make a, it's very much like your high school class almost. Like, so the people that were like the first year people that were there when I was there, the people that I mostly stick or like hang out and, and talk to still. Like, um, I'm still close with Heidi Gardner and uh, Andrew Dismukes, who's on the show now. Yeah, was, yeah. We split an, an office the year I was there. He was a writer on the show. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love, love, love those two. So, do they put you up in New York? Like, what's the whole process of moving there? Because oh, it's expensive it to live there and shit. And oh, it sucks. Yeah, they, they pay for you to move. I remember they give you like, I don't know, they gave me what I thought was like way more money than I was going to need to move. You know, they gave me like 10 grand and I'm like, I'm going to pocket half this. You know? Yeah. And then I get there and I'm like, nope, no, nope. Not even, that doesn't even pay for my move. You know what yeah. I mean? Where it's like, cause in New York, it's like, you gotta have like referrals and broker fees in like two months. Uh, and then uh, it's just like, they just fuck you. They railroad you. So it was funny, like thinking, I'm like, I'm gonna be on TV. I'm gonna make TV money. And then right away being like, no, yeah. I'm saving just as much as when I was yeah. doing whatever in Chicago. What's yeah. the biggest misconception about the show, would you say? That um, everyone always thinks that l you have to swallow Lauren's wedding ring as a sex thing for him. And you and the, and the, and the thing is, you do. I didn't know this you do. to as begin a, with. As a sex thing, you have to suck one of his pinky rings off of his little, uh, his little claw. And <laughs> you have to swallow. And he, he goes, and, and swallow it swallow it and then you have to you have to swallow one of his pinky rings and then he goes now pass it and I'm like I just swallowed it he goes I'll wait I'll wait till you pass it and I'm like it's gonna take me I, my stuff goes slow it's gonna take me like all day and he's like I'll wait and so he makes you wait around so he does do impressions <laughs> yeah that's my that's my Lauren everyone has a Lauren <laughs> it's Dr. Evil Dr. Evil yeah, is Lauren yeah, yeah. that really is that's wait so that is is that a serious thing yeah oh no no Oh, the, the, the pinky ring? Yeah. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just like, I just like to help younger comedians that I'm like, you're going to need to swallow Lawrence pinky ring. <laughs> and then shit it out in front of him. I was going to get ready. What's, uh, so did you get recognized and stopped a lot once? Because I think SNL is huge. Um, it, it definitely happens, but I was barely on when I was on. Like, I did it's not even have the intros a successful too. year. Yeah. What do you mean? The intros, too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was on it for a year. I definitely, it was funny though, the kinds of people that would recognize me, like airports, it would happen that year. But then weirdly, we had these couple friends that really were into escape rooms, right? <laughs> and it's not my thing, but they were like- well, I don't get know, it. I don't it's not really it. my thing. It's, 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 it's some white people nonsense, <laughs> yeah. you know, for the most part. But I'm like, okay. But we went to a handful of them with our friends that year in New York. Every person that runs an escape room recognized me. <laughs> Every person was like, uh, so like, everyone that runs an escape room watches it's me. SNL. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's me, these old rags. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so after SNL, what was the move? What, what, so were you like, fuck, my life's over because I, they only liked me for one year? Yeah, there was like a little bit of like, it probably took me a year, maybe even two to be like, what the fuck was that shit? It's like, uh, did you ever see The Princess Bride? Of course. Love that. There's that part where... The whole movie, Mandy Patinkin is like, you killed my father. 
prepare to, you know, I'm an Ego Montoya. Yeah. You killed my father, prepare to die. And yeah. At the end of the movie, he's like, I killed him. Like, I don't know what, what, to, what I'm going to do now. Yeah. Like, I felt like that where I'm like, I've spent my entire life wanting this, wanting this. And then I got it, which is insane. And then instantly lost it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do now? Luckily, I was performing live a lot. And so for me, doing stand up stuff was like an easy, like, thank God I could just like hit the road and yeah. in kind of, you know, you control your own destiny a little more with comedy stuff than you do with acting shit. You for know what sure. I mean? dude. And so for that, it was nice to just like be able to start doing stand up and doing comedy clubs and stuff like that. So that's been my saving grace. And finally, the scales have, have flipped that now more people come to my shows that see me pollute the internet with the comedy clips. with comedy garbage. which are fucking fantastic bro i put all my friends on like the guitar shit like the stepdad the oh yeah he has a great bit about uh it's really his good. stepdad and trying to like fucking be like my new dad but terry oh, is yeah, that his yeah. name it's a what's it's his, what's it, his? it's got layers it's got layers so my yeah it's my my stepdad keith my stepdad keith my yeah fi- keith. My fictional stepdad yeah, yeah i just told oh, it's about not true Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I just talk about if, if my dad had actually died and my mom remarried some guy and then I didn't like him, so I married his mom and became his stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, it's a whole thing. But it's very, very stupid, but. You're a very good I guitar did, player, too, hey, dude. Thank you. Appreciate that. Because that's like, I can't I barely tell jokes on stage. Never mind, do the guitar. Me, too. It's, it's, I use it to stall. Yeah. Stall. I just loop the chords. Loop, yeah. No, I. It's kind of you to say. I feel like every once in a while I'll get like a an actual guitar boy will be in, in the crowd and he'll come up to me afterwards and be like, I, I know what you're doing. <laughs> you're, you're lying to these good people. And like, <laughs> he's not wrong. Yeah. Uh, so how would that, uh, you know, experience shape you from being like an Eagle Scout? You know, like. Ooh la la. How did it shape yeah, you? Yeah. So from? like being an Eagle Scout to oh, like yeah. that perseverance. That's right. I am a freaking Scout. Scout's honor. What up? Shout out to all the Scouts out there. Is there, there was a doc that came out that my wife was like, we should watch this Boy Scout doc. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't want to know. Did you, did you ever like do some gay ass shit? And like, no, that was the thing. I'm like, and then she's like, are you repressing the, a memory of doing this? And I'm like, I don't think so. I saw my first boobs on a scout camp out. We were at Putin Bay in Ohio, which is in a little. Putting Bay? Put in Bay. <laughs> Oh, perfect destination for you boys. Them, them boys. We had a little bit of a jamboree and put in there. <laughs> and I remember walking around like in my scout uniform, but it's like a little party island that people in like Cleveland, Sandusky, like they'll go spring break there. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a little island in the, it's on like the, the Pocono. Le- it's like a, it's like a cheap vacation destination. Totally. For like, yeah. It's like Midwest. wineries. People do like bachelorette parties out there. Like it's a fun time, but it's like fun in a trashy way. Yeah. But I'm like walking around on the docks. And this weird bald headed Captain Stabbing looking dude was like, Hey, you guys are Boy Scouts? And we were like, I was like, I don't know, 13. And I'm like, Yes, yes, sir. And he goes, This is my gift from me from me to you. And it was <laughs> his two, penis. It was two girls uh, showed us their boobs because we had beads. We had like Mardi Gras beads that they Oh. Sold. And so we threw them the beads and we're like, me and my friends were like, we gotta get more beads. <laughs> and so we fucking sprint into town, buy more beads, and by the time we're back. The boobs are gone. Captain Stabbin's gone, dude. Fuck. Captain Stabbin was way gone. And you mentioned you're married. So wh- these old rags. <laughs> When'd you? Uh, so where'd you meet her? And then what's that whole story about? She she was the barista in the coffee shop I started doing comedy at in college. So she's like over my shit. She's so <laughs> done. She's so over it. But no, she's yeah. So she was forced because she was at work to. Uh, me. Yeah. yeah. So you had her during the SNL and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. She's been my, my ride or die. We've been oh, together a long time. That's awesome. That's yeah, ten yeah. plus years. Oh yeah, Thir- thirteen years I think or something like that. Or uh, twelve, but two married. So we put it off. COVID didn't help. But two married. We've been married too, but we've been together. Oh, for COVID. You had a little. Co- well, we were supposed to get married like a year earlier, but then we punted it a year. But then everyone still just got COVID at our wedding. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. We're just like, yeah, we got married in New Orleans where it's just like, ooh, a lot of beads yeah. there. Yeah, there you go. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we went wild with it. We spent all our money. But we did break up for a year in 2014. And I did want to use your podcast because I feel like your podcast is the avenue for this. Yeah. All right. I would love to hear it. 
This is important. So you broke this up is my you. PSA. Okay. This is my, <laughs> Your public smoochie announcement. My public smoochie announcement, all right? There was a year, 2014, 2015, that my now wife and I, who we were just dating back then, okay. we broke up. All right? We broke up for a year to, to explore other avenues, to see what else was out there, to see if this was really it. Because we've been together since we were 20, so you don't know. You, know? you, you don't know, know what you like. You don't know what you like. And so we had to go on a bit of a fuck rampage. All right. On our own way, on our own. We had, to, we had to take a year to just get it out of our system. And I want to say this right down the barrel of the lens. <laughs> I want to apologize for all those girls in 2014. <laughs> I did not. I did not do a very good job. I'll say this right now. It was after a lot of improv shows. Not good. That's not what you want. That's no. not that's not the the thing that you want to set up a sexual relationship. She's not being like, yes, yes, yes. No. And, and? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's never an. Yeah, there's no yes is coming. It yeah. Was, it was just, <laughs> Four in the morning, too drunk. It was, I wasn't doing a good job. And you know what? I want to apologize for all men out there in 2014. None of us were doing a good job. I right? wasn't probably, yeah. yeah. There's no way. Yeah, that, that's an unmemorable year. How old are you? I'm 28. Okay. So, so I was, fi- no, I was 14. I just graduated high school. So I was at prep school. Okay. So in 17, 18. So you were trying stuff. Yeah, but I went to Old Boys Catholic High School, so. So you were trying weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you weren't even spitting on your knuckles or anything. You were just punching no, it until no. it gave out. And listen, listen, I was a pretty smart kid, but the only exam I passed was the prostate. That's right here, yeah. I, Father Pat tough. had a... His penis could, could tell yeah. if there were lumps on your prostate. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It, was, it really I'll, helped if you fucked it. I was an altar toy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Like, did you? Were you raised Catholic? I was raised Episcopal. My mom was real, made me go every Sunday. So we were like diet Catholic. Wait, what's, what's Episcopal? Episcopalian, like Episcopal Church is like... I like how it sounds. So we still do um, communion. We still do confirmation. Is it, I mean, I'm, I'm drinking the wine. I'm yeah, doing okay. the whole thing. But our, our services weren't like nine hours long and they like were cool with gay people. You know, oh, that's so. I like that. It was like not as intense. Yeah. Like all my, all my Catholic friends, I was like, y'all got Wednesday church? That sucks dick. <laughs> and they're like, I know. We do. We have to learn how. Uh, what's your favorite place to perform stand-up? Oh, man. I feel like it changes over the years because I feel like I've been doing it long enough now that in my head, I came up in Chicago and I'm like, for the longest time, I was like, Chicago's the best. Yeah. Because Chicago's weird and they'll follow you down a rabbit hole a little further because like, I think Chicago might be the only city where like, improv and sketch stuff is more popular than stand-up. Yeah, I don't really go to improv shows out here. Out here, it's really Even not as much like of a thing. Even though they have UCB, but like, I don't go to the shows. I go to stand-up shows. Totally. They used to be more of a thing pre-COVID. Like, UCB Franklin was was bumping line. Like, there was a time where they definitely had their heyday. They used to have like IO West out here. There was more improv shit happening. It took a big hit during the pandemic, but yeah. I think like as far as like stand-up shows go, I used to be like so pumped to do Chicago all the time. And not that I'm hating on them, but last time I went, I was like, eh, it's all right. I've been like, I've been really bragging about how great you guys are. And about hey, how you guys like, are letting me down. And I'm like, you're kind of letting me down because I'm doing some weird following me down a rabbit hole shit. And you guys yeah, are coming with and, me. Yeah. There's places like Boston that are low key slept on where it's like Boston. They are like rowdy and fun in a way that's like. One notch away from being too much. Too much. But not. But I. But every time I've gone, I always have a great time with yeah. Boston. Florida's pretty good. I like Florida. Florida's I just came fun. Out from Tampa. Tampa was fun. I'm always very surprised by Dallas. Dallas is a good town. People in Dallas like to go out and they like to laugh and they they'll get weird with it. They yeah. drink just enough. They'll, yeah. They'll get a little rowdy, but like if you give them a little, <laughs> <laughs> like a puppy, you're like, hey. yeah. They're like, because you live in LA now, yeah. Live in LA now. Uh, how do you like it here? Because I feel like LA is just, even though it's kind of like the mecca of New York, LA, it's sure. kind of tough to do it because everyone's sensitive. I think that there's, you got to find the shows that you vibe with because there's so much shit going on in LA at any given point. There's certain shows where you're totally right, where it's like people, you, you get more arms crossed, yeah. Silver Lake folks, where it's like, look, would I get along hanging out with you? Like, <laughs> you know, for dinner or something? Probably. Are you a good comedy crowd? No, not at all. Yeah. Some of them are. Sometimes my, my theory is that sometimes people in Los Angeles go out to shows to be seen rather than to go have yeah. a good time. They're going out because they're going like 
you know, they're dressed with their asymmetrical bowl cut hopefully, hair. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully one of the comedians see me in the crowd. That's right. And like, but now that's a, that's a problem. That's a problem. I didn't even like, yeah, the, the Matt rification of, of, yeah. of stuff. Luckily, that hasn't hit me too hard yet. <laughs> but a little bit. I did. This was, this was a good. I, had, uh, I was up in Alaska, right? I did some shows up in Anchorage okay. uh, in December. Random. It was a little random, but it's very fun. Anchorage is super fun. They're like, they're down because there's, they got nothing else to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, <clears throat> so they're, they're having a, a good time. And I think the Matt rification of like people going to, to do like, they want to be part of the crowd work clip. I don't really do that much crowd work. Yeah. But I said something, I made some comment about like, I don't know who, who in this room is trying. Like I have a room, I have a, I have a song about like, uh, trying to gauge the horniness level of the room. Like, how much are we trying to get nasty tonight? Like, yeah. where, where we at? Are we like, I had a big dinner. I don't. I need. I need time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I got to unbutton the top button on my pants. I don't want to. I don't want to fuck right now. Yeah. Well, you know DP I mean? dry dashing period. Exactly. And yeah. I, th- I, I was doing really well. And this girl and her boyfriend, or someone she was on a date with, in the front row. This girl was like, she yelled out something to the tune of, like, I want to fuck you. And I, and I said, get. I was like, get in line. I put. <laughs> like, yeah. Obviously you do. Yeah. Um, but as soon as she said that, the dude got mad at me. Like I said something. I'm like, I didn't say anything. Your girlfriend's one that wants she to suck said a cock. I didn't say anything. I just yeah. told her, get in line playfully. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck like, him. But then I had the next day when I was leaving uh, Alaska, I had, a, I had like a day to burn, right? Or no, this was the last time I went up there. I've been up there twice. It was summertime. And so it's like 24 hours of daylight in the summer. Like it never gets dark oh, pretty much. Yeah. And so they're like, come burn some daylight with us. Uh, we, we're having a little, uh, having a little cookout, you know, it's, it's nice in the, in the summertime. We're hanging out on this porch and this woman is walking around at the party and she's got like a food processor and a spoon and she's every person at the party. She's going, here you go. Here is it cocaine? Go. No, it's, um, she, she ground up mushrooms. Ooh. So it was mushroom dust. And Wait, I'm like, snorting it? No, no, just put it in your mouth. Oh, okay. Like just a just a big spoon of dust, yeah. right? And so here I'm like, comes the choo choo. The choo choo. Yeah, open up for the choo choo. And I was like, I don't know if the choo choo is open right now. <laughs> I was like, I got to be on a flight in an hour, and I don't want to be like yeah. losing my mind. Yeah. And she goes, she looks at me, and she goes, <laughs> "You won't trip from that. That you won't trip from that much. That's like a micro dose." But I'm like, okay. Uh, she flies it in. Of course, I'm tripping nuts at the at the air. And like, I felt like a 16 year old that that was like trying to hide weed from their parents or something. Like, I had done nothing wrong. I'm just on. I'm just tripping. Yeah. At the airport, trying to go through security and being like, "Yes, sir, you my shoes." And, I, and, I, and, I, and then just to clarify, I don't need to take my shoes off. He's like, "Because because 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 I, cause, cause I cause I'm pre-check." Yeah. You're like, "Yes, sir, you're fine. Just go." I'm like. They will. I'll, so, take, yeah, I'll take them off. If you guys want to find, I don't need them anymore. <laughs> you can have my shoes. Oh, you can. You can have these. Yeah. These are. Yeah. These are optional shoes. Besides the airports, do you like shrooms? Sh- uh, shrooms? I yeah, I do. I like shrooms. I feel like more people in everyone that I know in LA that likes shrooms just likes microdosing though. Where I'm like, yeah. not, not, I'm kind of over it. I'm like. If I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Oh, really? Same with, sometimes same with this, but which is like I have unhealthy relationships with with. If I'm doing a substance, I'm doing it. Yeah. If I'm drinking, I want to. I'm no. I'm not trying to get after it. Yeah. I'm, I'm drinking all, the whole bucket. I'm not. I don't get a buzz from like a glass of wine, and then it's just a waste of calories and yes. potentially a sneaky hangover. When yes. if I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna drink. Yes. That's. I pick my spots. Yeah. I pick my spots. Like yeah. When but I, with shrooms though, I, I'm a big microdoser. See. I get it. I've done it and enjoyed it, but I feel like for me, I enjoy it way more when I just really commit. When I see God, you know. What <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. You have yeah, a Joshua I mean, Tree. You ever go there? I've been to Joshua Tree, but I've never done. I've never tripped in Joshua Tree, but it feels like a great place to trip. That's the only reason I go to Joshua Tree. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, just, you're out there licking the tree. You're out there. Yeah, just climbing ca- rocks. A little fuck hole in the tree. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. I don't have think a, they would be good trees to fuck. No. If I had to do a top three like, trees to fuck, Joshua trees, not one of them. Not one of them. A willow no. though. A willow, mucho fuckable. <laughs> mucho fucky. They have lots of they have lots of knots. Yeah, and sue me, but maple? Well, maple, maple pretty hot. I think maple, sweet maple, there. maple or hot is trees. A, is a fastball down the middle, classic classic babe. That's tree. missionary too. That's missionary. Yeah. I'll fuck a maple tree, no problem. Yeah. And uh, if you want to get like maybe like a BBW, like an oak tree. And uh, yeah, if you're if you're into some curves. <laughs> you're gonna want to get, or you go down to that. Where is it? 
the Magic Kingdom tree. Oh. I'm talking about that Disney World. I'm talking about that thick tree. That thick tree. Oh, the one like that Redwood. Red wood. Yeah, nice, if you're talking dude. BBW, you, we got there. We got there at the same time. A Sequoia. Sequoia? No, those Sequoias are Sequoias don't look real. They're yeah, they're too. Yeah. They're exotic. They're yeah. fucking too much work. They got too, yeah, they don't <laughs> shave. And they only reproduce by fire. Did you know that? No. That's why there's so few Sequoias. That in order for Sequoias to spread, there has to be a fire to like open the seeds up. The seeds don't open without wildfires. No way. It's real. Google it. Oh, is that true? Oh, that one's true. Oh, okay. It's real. That's real. Look at Kat. I love the glasses out of nowhere. And she's also freezing. She she's looking so up. It's like top three most fuckable trees. Tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and the birch is, birch is apparently really fuckable. I actually think birch would be a. Aspen would be really good and fuckable too. Do you know what's up? I've with never aspen been to, trees. I've never been to Aspen. So, I've never been to Aspen either. And I only know it from Dumb and Dumber. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they go to Aspen. Yeah. But aspen trees are all the same tree. Like underground, they're all connected. So like an aspen, when you see like an aspen forest, it's all the same tree. It's like the underground railroad of like yes. trees. Is that an aspen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're all, that's all the same tree. So it would be like having sex with clones. So it's like uh, so it's like you're having sex in Alabama. It would be like, yeah, they're related. all related. Like, yeah. Not only are they all related, they're all the same. <laughs> they all look the yeah, same. Vicky May or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about this? Some girl picked me up from the airport last night. Came back and great gal. Yeah, great. Picked gal. you up from the airport. Yeah, and I didn't even, I didn't even bring her to Smoochy Town or anything. I was so tired. Wow. And this one, I may see her later. But I like uh, her already. She was she she was telling me about this place, Brandy Melville. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? It's a store on the West Side, and they it's one size fits all. Yeah. Yeah. I and believe, how is I never that? believe that. How many times have you bought something that's one size? I don't know. With me, I don't like, know. Like, but I like, and buy. then they get flack because. Like it doesn't fit big woman or something. So like, right. They're like one size fits all in parentheses. You got to be within a, reason. Yeah. <laughs> within reason. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have to buy a second seat on an airplane, like that needs to be a thing. Yeah. Like, why can't I bring in fucking five pounds over my luggage? But fucking we got fucking the big show getting in for one ticket price. That's right. And I have to I have to hide my second dick that would need its own seat. <laughs> yeah. How Do you dare have a big you? one? Huh? Do you have a big pepper? I got a really, really normal pepper that's that, that's done me no wrong, but also uh, apparently for a year in 2014, it did you a lot of wrong? It didn't. It did. It's led me astray plenty of times. <laughs> but in terms of like when it's been encountered, anyone being like "Wow" or "Oh no," it's just been like, "Yeah, that's a oh, standard that's a dick." Yeah, that's a pretty much a textbook dick. So how would you? It's get my giant nutsack with normal size balls. <laughs> in it. Just, just two walnuts <laughs> in a dragon, like, dude. The walnuts inside of a fucking garbage bag, and you gotta knot it up like the dudes who have dreads. You have to like really yeah. tie it up and then thread <laughs> tie it off. Yeah. And so, how'd you get your wife back after that? You was it, how many? What girl on your fuck rampage did you fuck and was like, "I'm done." I love her, dude. Yeah, I'm yeah. done, dude. Um, I can't. There is. I want her back. This is you, if you were serious about your PSA at the beginning. I am. There is something to be said about when you find someone who you know their exact combination. You know what I mean? Meaning, it's when when you're when you're. Oh, you know how to make people, her come. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but not only that. There's another. There's another level to it because there's something about when you're dating people. There's an exhaustion that comes with having to be your best self. You know what I mean? At all you're, times. You're trying to press and you, fucking. You're holding in a fart. You should be at least like this date, morning. Date one. This morning I had to kick her out. I had to shit so fucking yes. badly and get yep. ready for my first taping here. You know, and I wanted to fuck too, but I wouldn't want to shit and then fuck and it would have been weird. And so I was just like, hey, I'll talk to you later. Yep. It's like I'm on my I'm in my house. I can't poop in peace, oh. but I don't want her to think like I'm ewy, even though everyone fucking poops, she probably had to poop too. Exactly. But there's a something to be said when you're when it's a first or second encounter and you're like, you're trying to put out your best version of yourself. Whereas that's like real love is like once you can identify your wife's fart in, in LAX, where you're like, that was you. <laughs> I know that was you. Like, there's 900 people here. That was you. I know that. That was smells you. like Jersey Mike. I know Mike's. that. Yeah, exactly. Because I had that, that, that same fart. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, you that's just had it. That's gnarly. But like when it comes to purely just like on a sexual level, you sometimes when you're first encountering someone, maybe they got a kink or something, you're having to find out in the moment. Maybe you didn't front load like a, you know, yeah. this girl's into this or this or this. It's some. It's different. It's nice when you when you're like, I know exactly all the stuff you like. You know exactly all the stuff I like. We don't need to. You know all the moves. We have a rhythm. We're good. I care about you and love you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which helps. It yeah. Helps. What do you What do you like? Um, 
all piss eating, all shit drinking. I don't like to chew. Um, now, I'm pretty vanilla. I'm pretty vanilla. I feel like the older I get, the more I'm just like, I like enthusiasm is what I, that, that's my, my, uh, my like, fetish. You're like cheering you on? Like, I, I like, I like, I'm turned on by, uh, appreciation by, by, a, by a woman getting into it. Whatever oh, it is, like you know what I mean. Dirty talk and shit. Uh, if that's how it manifests, let's go. Any, any. I'm into enthusiasm. I'm into like put on, put on a show. A Words bit. of affirmation is my love language. To, like if that's how it, I'm good with that too. It's however like if you're having. I want to know you're having a good time. Okay, that's don't fake I mean. it because I've had girls fake orgasms. Oh, totally. Me and my wife had to call a ceasefire back when we were. <laughs> <laughs> this was like when we were in college, though. We were, we were like. We would, we would, in like early years in Chicago, we would be hooking up and we would just be like way too drunk to the point where I'm like, there would be, a, there would be a moment where, where you kind of have to look at each other and be like, neither, this, neither one of us is going to have yeah. fun here. It's fun. We're ha we've had fun, but this is not going to end how it ends normally yeah. tonight. It's We're 45 just, minutes in yeah. and I have a cramp. I'm pushing rope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, my my brother taught me that term, push and rope. Yeah, I'm just fucking, I'm push, and it's not you think, soft. You think you can get it back too? It's not gone. No, it's, it's it looks like a like a bone, but then you, you go, oh no, that's it's, it's got some give to it. Trying and though you try different things, like you'll try to you yourself try to get her get them back, but there's no it's there, there's a, ceasefire is a perfect way to put you, it. You call a ceasefire and you're like, look, I'll see you in the morning. You know yeah, I mean? where, there, where there's a moment where you have to look and be like, it's four <laughs> thirty. And I'm 11 and years I'm deep. sweating. Yeah, I'm, I'm wasted. I'm so tired. My, I want, I've been looking, because she's faced away. I've been, look, <laughs> I've been looking at the bed water that I, because I'm a gentleman. I always, I've prepared two bed waters. You yeah. Bed, you, want, you want a bed water. I'm like, I've been looking at my bed water this whole time. I just want to drink a sip of water and go to sleep. Yeah. I'm having a good time. <laughs> my breath is terrible. Oh, like, I stopped kissing you and I don't want you to kiss me because no. your breath probably stinks. Your breath is worse. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a dating thing too of like early dating is like having to worry about your dragon breath in the yes. morning. Yeah. But then I think you just have to call that out though. Cause I think most, most girls <laughs> would be cool that where you're like, Hey, Give me a minute. I like, I got, I can tell I got dragging breath. Like, give me, I got to go back. What's your take on, cause I love fresh out the shower sex. Cause there's a certain level of comfortability. The service here is unlimited. Uh, but like I get home from service the, here is unlimited. <laughs> yeah. I you like be licking like everything. Oh, oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, totally. My mouth's on her rectum. She's got two fingers knuckled deep in mine. I'm begging so for a third. Just, yeah, give me three. Give me three. Don't even ask. Don't just bring it. Just bring it. Let's play ball. That's right. Uh, do Again, you, don't just have one sip. No. Don't microdose that. No. I, get it in there. I want you to tickle the back of my uvula. <laughs> I want to feel your fingers in the back of my throat. You're up there so far. All right. Uh, <laughs> do you that's, eat not, ass? that's not my vibe. Do you eat ass? You know, I we, I've done we've done it all. When you marry someone, you're like, let's check all the box. Let's see what what. Uh, Where there, has there been something that you haven't done? I mean, I'm sure if someone's like, you ever printed out anime of of a mini <laughs> fucking? I'm like, yeah. no, I haven't done that. But I mean, like, have you I invited a third? Things. Not in not in our our uh, marriage. Not days. in our marriage, but I've I've had I've, yeah. I've it's happened in my life. And one time, oh god. <laughs> I did. It did happen one time, and there was this. The, and I, the girl that I was really into, because you do pick a favorite. That's something during the, during the threesome. Yeah, here's my here's one, my one analogy. One girl gets, gets ball duty. Eventually. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you're like it's you're like better. having two. Uh, <laughs> it's like two two NFL games on on two TVs, right? One of them's a good and game. And then one of them's a good game. You may like the uniforms a little better. Sometimes you like the uniforms a little better. And then you start paying attention to one, but the only difference is that the players don't get mad at the on the field of the other game. That's right. And That's then right. and then after after the game's done, you fucking you shouldn't have watched them either. You, should, That's you right. feel like, oh, I should have took the under. Yeah, you take it. Like, I'm not doing a good job with either. <laughs> yeah. I'm but it, it, it you know, good good old fashioned time, tell you what, but you pick a favorite. You yeah. Know, you know. And then, you picked not your wife. Oh, it wasn't my this is not my wife. This is before this oh, you had like when I was in you college. You had a threesome. I had a threesome in college. Okay. And there was a moment where you definitely pick a favorite. And, it, and I remember thinking to myself, like, I know the threesome is cool or whatever, but I almost don't want the other girl. Like, I'm like, this is fun, but I'm like, I like the other girl more. Mm, I, want yeah. to, I want to be able to give her my whole, I um, was kind of like, you know. Entertaining. But then the, the one girl that I liked, I knew she had just broken up with her boyfriend, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew that it was like, I thought it was all the way done. 
And so I remember laying in bed the next morning and I heard like they're laying on me. They're asleep. So like they're I'm, I'm doing this. I'm scarfing. <laughs> the door creaks open and this dude pokes his head in. Oh no. Her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> this dude was a D1 basketball center. This guy was a freight train of muscle. This guy could have killed me in a second. If he wanted to, he could have absolutely murdered me. And I knew he was really nice, but he had like kind of, um, I don't want to, I guess the term now would be like uh, soy boy beta cuck energy. He's a very like, very, you know, even though he's a huge dude. Yeah. He's always kind of quiet. And, always like, and I made eye contact with him and he closed the door behind him. And I remembered in that moment being like, he's going to kill me. Like he's going to get his gun he's because waiting. he lived. He's, he's like he clearly hasn't moved out. He hasn't moved out of this house yet because he used to like live in this apartment. Building. Oh, and I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna go get a gun from his like dresser and come and fucking kill me. Yeah. So I immediately like had fun. See you. You know, I immediately threw my clothes on and got the fuck out of there. That's scary. Yeah. Did you ever see him around campus? I I don't know that I ever saw that guy again. Did you see the girl again? Yeah, but they went to... Yeah, later I, that I, night. I didn't go to UC. I, so I went to OU, and this was like during the summer, kind of like... A, or oh, okay. I was like, it wasn't my school. So oh, the bad boy of the, oh, the other school? That's okay. Right. I, I got to leave and not have to worry about any... Um, but, but I knew them from high school. When growing up, were you always the funny kid? Yeah, oh, yeah. I was a problem. <laughs> uh, I was a problem. I was a problem for sure. But then eventually you start to learn like the things that... You got in trouble for it. Like you just learned when to shut the fuck up was a big social awareness, essentially it's big. But then there was also a moment where you're like, then you start to use it for your advantage where you're like, if I can get the teacher to laugh, you can't, yeah. get, you can't get in trouble. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So the teacher laughs. It's like, you really that mad at me? You laugh. Come on. You know what I mean? Exactly. Come on. You, it's funny. I'll stop. I'll stop. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, then you eventually get re- the, the thing you get in trouble for growing up, you get rewarded for as an adult, which is weird. It's very weird. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I was always like the funny kid. I was always like the possibly gay kid too. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister, like she probably still thinks I'm gay. Uh, it was just like, I was very like, like uh, fun dancing around and stuff. Cause I have three sisters. I, like I'm always around women. So like I'm very totally. comfortable with my sexuality. Totally. Like, like I've asked this question in the pot all the time. Like how much would it take for you to start a cock? You know, briefcase of cash in front of you. I'll answer this question, but I, it reminds me of a question that I would always ask people when I would smoke weed with them uh, you, the, for the first time. I will answer. Then you can then ask me. We'll but do little trick I, questions. I called it the eat that bag principle. All right. So first of all, picture yourself standing center court, Madison Square Garden, your stadium of choice. And it's packed. There's, however, 40,000 people all chanting, eat that bag. Eat that bag. First, first, eat that bag principle. What kind of bag do you picture sitting there? <laughs> For some reason, it was shit. You just like like a paper bag of shit? Like yeah. A, okay, so like a No, bra- you could see the shit. It was, it was, oh, like it was a, a glad. It was glad bag, yeah. Okay, like a, like a quarter, like a gallon quarter freezer bag. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. All right. So then I would guide you in this in this exercise to admit that with that many people cheering, just human nature, you would eat the bag. Let's say it's not filled with shit. Let's say it's literally just a Ziploc bag. It's just the plastic empty bag. You, you you would eat. You would attempt under that pressure to eat that bag. Hundred percent. Not you with would. shit. Not with shit. But just an empty bag for sure. And then the eat that bag principle is like you would do it if it was half full. You would twenty thousand people screaming, and eventually the eat that bag principle is like, what's the least amount of people that it would take? To peer pressure you into like doing something you don't want to like, you would yeah. you, you don't want to eat a plastic bag. But it's like if you have like six really good, like <laughs> really good friends all like getting, catching you at the right time, all chanting "eat that bag." Like like, but people would be obstinate and be like, "I wouldn't do it." Like a hundred people, I'm like a hundred people. That's your high school gym. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you would you take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? And in my head, I always pictured a duffel bag. 
A bat. Okay. What yeah. was yours filled with? Mine was empty. Just I'm just eating canvas. Oh, so the shit just came out. There is a, Yeah, you filled that in. So that's, <laughs> that's, like, that's like the ink blot test. Yeah. That's like the, uh, what is it? Scantron? The, no, no, no. The, uh, when they show you things and like, what does this remind you of? Oh, um, Rorschach, yeah. Rorschach. Test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I see dicks. I see my dad. I see my, dad. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see my dad sucking this dicks. Is a lot to unpack. Uh, that being said, 30, 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had someone on. He was like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not doing it for like two, 10 billion. I wouldn't oh, do it. No, no. Like, what do you shut the fuck up? If a, if a hundred grand was in front of me, and here are the stipulations for the cock. I don't think I would do a very good job. Oh, I, I think I'd be really good. You do? Yeah. I mean, if you, I would try to give it my all. <laughs> but you don't have to swallow. Well, I'm five to swallow. What do you mean? <laughs> you don't swallow. They're paying me. Five minutes. They're paying me. Am I going to spit? No, five no, minutes. I'm a grown man. Five minutes. It's a good size. Not too big, not too small. It tastes good. And the guy's kind of cute. It <laughs> <laughs> it tastes good. Is what Listen, I'm me. swallowing voluntarily to make sure he had a good time. I mean, I want him to have a good time. I mean, I want him to like call like me. me. <laughs> I'm gonna call him the next day. I would do it for fifty grand, and no one would ever know. That's the other thing. I think that that's a bit. I think for it's funny that you had to qualify that he's like an attractive and or that it tastes good. <laughs> Meaning, like when you say it tastes good, do you mean that it just tastes like nothing? Like it's it neutral? No, like it doesn't for some reason that? it tastes like like a banana flavored Happy Dad. That's and that's what the sponsor's all about. <laughs> yeah. Do you want your dick to taste like good cells? There has been times where I'm like, have you ever had a spur of the moment, um, like someone sucking your dick and you're like, I worked out. Or like, or, yeah. Or, or well, you're like, I, that's why. Or I'm, you're like, we went on. It's been a long night, and I think that it's it's hot. The whole shower thing. I right. Yeah, this, 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 you're this right. Should be called ADD. This podcast. Well, for me, uh, because when I get home from the club or something, if I bring a girl back, I'm gonna Shit. rinse off real quick. So now I don't have to feel self conscious about my dick smelling or sweating. And if totally. she doesn't, I'm like, do you have oh. a do you have a un, unkempt Brillo pad thick at a pubes, or do you take care? Do you? He's looking now. He's checking. It's like uh, it's like my leg hair right here. I shave my legs too. Gotcha. Oh, you do. So you'll get. You're you're a hairy boy. I'm not like so hairy, but more muscle definition comes when you shave your legs, and I get a spray tan here and there. So there you go. My wife does that too. I'm always like, do you, does she make you spread your cheeks when you when she sprays you down? And she's like, totally. Oh, I go in the machine. Oh, the, my, the, my wife has a woman that comes and does it. Oh, really? Yeah, she's Australian That's you get in too. there better. That's more reliable. Oh, this woman is really getting in the. And I'm like, she missed the spot right here. Do you shave your ass? No. I yeah, don't. that's why I don't want girls going down there because it's like, oh yeah, and I wouldn't want you to like you're a good girl. Stop. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not over it. Like if that's if that would be her thing, then like go for it. But I, it's it's not my thing. I know. Like I feel like 2019 was like the year of eating ass. Mm. I feel like we're a few years <laughs> out. <I feel laughs> that like was a big ass eating year. I feel like it was. I feel like 20. I think it caused COVID. 2014 though. 2014, <laughs> not a big ass eating year. No, it really wasn't. It was more. Um, Musket stuffing year. Yeah, were you, were you a dick, were you a dick pic guy? Did you ever send? Those oh, out? totally. Yeah. Really? Oh, totally. Yeah. I wouldn't send them unprompted. I would like. If she <laughs> said, me, "Did you want to see it?" I, it would be more like if she sent me stuff. I'm like, I don't have much to offer you. Yeah, but I have one. I can offer you this. Is it? Oh, you use it every time. You, you uh, I had a few different ones. I would always, um, if she wanted one in the moment, happy to do it. You could do a good. There's a good trick. You could do a good. There is a good trick. You want to have something in the in the in the distance to give perspective, right? Behind you, you want to have front. a you want to have a baseball bat propped up in the doorway. You know, if you're laying down, you want. To, oh, okay. You want to be like, man, the size of a baseball bat. Yeah. But you're like, no, it's actually just thirty feet across the room. Yeah, and it's too want Exactly, exactly, and it's one of those little tiny bats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Little yeah. Baby Super bats. But if you're yeah, if you and, and you could do the move where you go underneath your gooch. And you peel the like there's that um, little bit of skin that connects your balls to your dick. You know what I mean? Like a little bit of webbing, you know, underneath the the main tube, underneath your dick, where in between your balls and your dick. There's, there's a like little a bit seam. of skin. There's a seam. There's a seam. You I can, thought I had surgery when I was like a baby, and my mom never told me. But everyone has that. Everyone's got the seam. Okay. There's a seam. That's good. What you want to do to give yourself some more like rocking and and rolling power. Is you want to pin, you want to pinch that seam and get it where you where you can't oh. see it to really give yourself the extra like this thing stands it's like a pendulum yeah like because gravity is gonna pull to to where you're shooting it all over your little tongue yeah you know what I mean yeah but you can pinch that seam really make it seem like your thing stands straight up ninety degree angle from while there you're you go. down 
So that was always a trick of mine. So that's the secret of the pros. Being me, uh, being married, do you find that like you? Is it true that you don't have sex as much, or because um, you're married for so long? It's like I have friends that are married. It's like, yeah, we we've done it for so long. It's like you don't really get in the mood as much anymore. Like, do you jerk off a lot? Like, there's. I feel like you come. It comes and goes in waves. I feel like um, because you know that you got a partner who's like down. Who's down. Like you, you don't want to annoy her though, and like no, but now you, dinner's gonna be weird, awkward because you were a hornball during the afternoon. And that's like, right. Yeah. I think that there's more like um, you do lose a little bit of the mystique of the like uh, initiation aspect of it. Like she knows all of my moves of how I'm gonna signal to her that I'm like trying to get after it. What's you know, one of them? My, one of my favorite things I like to go and I like to say, "Mom's horny," and I, you know, I'm mom. <laughs> I'm like, mom's horny. No, I don't. But anytime, anytime that you like initiate, she just like, she knows. She's like, you're horny. And I'm like, I was trying to be like, cool. I was trying to be yeah. like, sweet. She's like, you literally do that. At, you know, just like, she knows your moves. She knows it's coming in a way that like, I don't know. I'm sure like when you're dating, there's more of a like, a fun nervousness that comes with the uh, what's the mystery of it and that's why yeah. dating in LA sucks because there's a certain chase of wanting what you can't have and you know once you get someone it's like oh the mystique and the like the chase is gone sure but deep down you both know you want to fuck so yeah. it's like why are we playing games well if you have good sex that's like a lot of that is you can replicate it in, in, in the sex itself the, the yeah. chase of it but then there is a certain amount of like once you're done you're then like alright we do need to like I have to not hate you. Yeah. You know, and vice versa. Like she has to be able to like put up with you for as long as she wants to be at your house. Yeah. Whatever. Which you is a I mean? little annoying. Cause I used to like, once I've had sex with someone, it's like, mm. I know what you mean. Like right after porn, it's like, what am I You're like, I don't even like this stepmom at all. No, absolutely. This stepmom is too is that your favorite? What's your favorite porn category? You know, uh, comes and goes. And I think this might be a, a boring search, but I love, I'm a sucker for amateur I do not like, like porn even, stars I don't like high heels like I want it to be a real person I want it to look like it's real people that's something I, I get off on okay what the quality of it too uh sometimes like security that, cam that's, footage that's the that's the give and take you gotta that's why you gotta sift you gotta, through yeah. some crap because there's lots of bad angles and bad uh lots of mattresses on the floor yeah there's lots of uh people you're like this guy's too sweaty Bro, I, I like, think I've got bad angle just butthole pounding you're like I don't I you want them to uh, put some care into it, yeah. But I'm not for some reason it's not my style to have like the full like hair blowout, like yeah, uh, full lighting. Too much talking, of, uh, too much like dirty talk. It's like fill I'm me up, that, daddy. Sometimes I'm into that, but in a porn scenario, like a a studio porn, yeah, it's I fake. don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't. I need to buy. That's what I'm. I'm noticing. The older I get, I need to. I need to believe I that these it. two people are fucking because I don't know. I'm turned on by that. I might. My mind's got to get fucked a little too. You know. What yeah. I'm saying? I the most pages I've uh, consecutively went on on Pornhub probably seventy two. Yeah. I was on page seventy two one time. That's I, a lot of pages. No, I know. I, I, I couldn't find like a video 10. I liked, but I was fucked up coming over the bar, right. and I brought a girl back. Took Viagra. Do you just hover? Like, are you doing it on your phone? Or are you doing it on a? Oh, I'm a phone guy. Okay, so. I mean, we're all on our phones now, but there was a time where I feel like on your phone, you can like hover over the thumbnail and it'll kind of give you a little, the play by play of like, kind oh, of that's what's what I coming. do. Oh, that's what I do. But there's something about like, sometimes though, you've got your favorites where you're like, this isn't even giving me the best parts. Yeah. Like, and then I'm like, how much good stuff have I missed out there? Because I only gave it the thumbnail hover and I'm like, nah, exactly. But you can it. always tell in the bottom right, it's 4k. Or HD. That's another one you can tell by the company. Reality Kings makes a good one. Naughty America. They're really doing good stuff over there. Uh, but I took Viagra and I didn't know. I thought it was instant. So like I had sex with her because I have a quick trigger. I've never done Viagra, but I, I literally Don't do said it. this to Don't my do wife it. recently. And she's like, you'll have a boner for hours. And I'm like, no, oh, that's what buddy, they say. If you it's have a long time. She left and I didn't go away. I was like jerking Even off. You. I was jerking off profusively sweating <laughs> for like six hours. That's how I ended up on page 72. I would jerk off. I would come like come shot. I would come shot myself in the eye because I was all backed up. And, and then, right. yeah. And, and it then, was like, thick too. and then, like, two set. Oh, so it was just like molasses. It was blue cheese. From <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. That's some buffalo chicken from Barney's. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, two minutes later, it was ready to go again. Yeah. Here's the thing I feel like when it comes to refractory period, 
the uh, the time after you yeah you uh, shoot out your big thick rope yeah um, that you need rope. to to <laughs> yeah different kind of rope this time this yeah. one's more of a liquid rope. I feel like I've always that's been a, that's been a talent of mine. I feel like I've always been able to to rally quick. Oh really? Yeah, I've always been able to be like, give me sixty seconds. See, that's go. good because once I come, I'm like. It get out of here. Get out of scram. Oh, what's this mess? Yeah. No. <laughs> but now I go Dude, down until amazing. they come. Well, yeah. And then so I have less performance anxiety. I know what you mean. That's uh that's a it's wild to me that there are so many older dudes who are fully they don't give a shit about if a woman comes or not. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking well, about? That's yeah. embarrassing to say out loud. Yeah. Like that's but, like that doesn't make you but look But then cool, again, dude. it got me thinking of like when you do do that, like you're basically teasing a girl, right? So when a girl teased me, I'm like, oh, I haven't had her yet. I haven't come to you yet. So I want to hang out again to do it. So maybe is it like that? You don't see what I'm saying? But these guys, it's not even that. They just I think they just don't know what they're they don't care at all about them. And I'm sure what you're saying is right. Like there are women who get off on like the guy not caring or being indifferent. But most women want to. Like if a guy come. didn't make you come, Kat, would you see him again? If he, not that no. he didn't make you come, but he didn't care. It was all about him all the time for no. two minutes. That sucks. That sucks. Because then you're just like a self, because you're selfish, number one, but you're selfish as like, I'm 34. So like you're selfish at 34, you're probably not. Like you're never changing. Yes, mm -hmm. or unless it's like explicitly your thing to be like denied, and like some people, like I'm sure, are into the daddy the issues tease. a lot in LA. Yeah, there's a lot. You know, it, it's one thing to go like I, I like to be like edged, or I like to be like teased, and I don't want to come. Like that is a whole different thing. Or there's like power dynamic kind of play. But then if it's like no, you just we hooked up, and you had absolutely no regard for me having a good time. Like, yeah, fuck, what the fuck are you talking? Like there's. Yeah. I feel like it's older dudes that do that. It's like yeah. guys who've never, and they almost like brag about. It. They're like, you 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 eat you eat at a girl's pussy, nah, dog. Don't want women to come with me. Mm -mm. I want it to be a bad time for her, <laughs> and I want to come in thirty seconds and then <laughs> sob, and then put a gun on my head. <laughs> what was the room? You said something reminds you. Oh, I'm remember. Uh, I was. When I said like, oh, this mess, like like, like that post nut clarity, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. kind of like I need to, you know, whatever it is. I remember being like a kid just learning to jack off, and I feel like I I learned to jack off before I was able before anything came out. Yeah. I was jacking off before I was able. You were getting to come. the feeling, but nothing was coming out. Correct. So I was coming, no jizz. It was just like, <laughs> you know, like, not like, like <laughs> you know, what I mean? just like like cartoon like. <laughs> Nothing would come out. Just, dust. <laughs> just smoke out of your, your breath. And I remember it was awesome because it means you could jack off anywhere and all the time, nonstop. There was no cleanup, no no risk. You're just have to, over you're the just, pants too. Because oh no like, prob, not even making a mess. I remember the first time I ever jacked off and something came out. I remember like being pissed off at my dick. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what the fuck? We were at like, Target. I was like. Is this gonna happen every time now? Yeah. This sucks. Yeah. And then ever since it's happened every time, and I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> I don't like all this gack. My, my first cum story that I I didn't do the magic trick that you were talking about. You didn't start no way too early. You didn't have any <laughs> yeah, older no. brothers of your friends being like, this is how you jack off. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> you work. Oh, you did totally. a show and tell your friends? Not a show and tell, but he was more just like a my older do you know like friend's you know older this? brother was like telling telling us like you guys don't jack off and we're like nine and we're like we do we do and they're like yeah they were like uh, 12 you know my I mean? first time i was laying next to <laughs> oh god they've heard of it uh i was on a road this is this is a story that's told every time not every time only time. once on a road trip to with my uh my dad was in the passenger seat no matter i was driving it was my ex stepmom uh me and my stepsister at the time. And you know how you lay down in the back seat and like uh, on the lay down, like now her head's over there and like. You you jacked off in a family car trip. No, 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 no. She started touching my little pink pepper and I liked it and I didn't want to say anything. And then they were up there. There were this distance between our parents and her. And I thought I peed because something came out. And then when we get to Naples, Florida, like I, kept asking her to do it, do the thing again, because <laughs> it felt so good. Give me that foot job again. Yeah, give me the foot, yeah, and uh, she wouldn't do it, and I really resented her for a while. <laughs> I think we need to stop coming down on feet, guys. All right. Are you in a feet? 
Not really, but I think we dog on feet guys too much. Because in the grand scheme of all the things, I feel like the, like there's certain uh, fetishes that people shame. I think more than yeah, others. that's true. Feet and like a nice, pretty foot. I, I mean, I, I, I can appreciate a, a, a someone having uh, taking care of their feet. Yeah, I'm not. Do I want to fuck their feet? No, I don't. No. Do I want them in my mouth? Absolutely not. I'm good without that. <laughs> but I can appreciate good feet. Yeah, uh, just like anything else. But I think in the grand scheme of things, there's a lot of like um, fetishes to draw from the from the sorting hat of fetishes that you are bestowed. At, yeah. you know, when you become an adult where I'm like, I think we dog on feet guys too much. Let them have feet. You know I mean? There's like, there's a, I remember like there's dudes like that drive up and down on their bikes in Chicago. Uh, and like, we'll just like stop their bike and jack off, like pull their bike shorts down and jack off at you. And then we'll drive away on their bike. What part of Chicago is this? <laughs> this was like on the lake. Uh, there was this weird guy that looked like a young Santa Claus and he would wear pink spandex pants and he would just like, Drive his bike up, and then you would see over there. You must be related to Captain Stabbing. And and I'm like, that's a that's a shitty, that's a shitty, like, one to draw from the hat. Yeah, it'd be like, I'm this. This is what I like is driving my bike up to people in my bike shorts and jacking off for ten seconds and then running away. Like that's what I'm. If you're driving a bike with bike shorts, you're probably not getting laid. So yeah, this guy was not getting laid. Yeah, this guy was not getting laid. But you're right. But I'm like, I just think I'm like, that's a shitty one. That needs to be shamed because you're. Do you, are you a bike guy? I like to. I'm a Peloton slut. Oh, are you? Oh yeah. <laughs> nice, oh, yeah, dude. I never tried it yet, but I hear, it. I've heard great things. Big time slut. Uh, do you have one at your home? Oh yeah. Assuming? I get juiced. Really? Oh my god, I get drenched. Yeah. All right. I'm into it. I'll tell you what. I've been on a bit of a lapse with a lot of things in my life recently. I've been on the road a lot. So for the past, is great. Five, Every weekend. Weeks, it's been great. Been great. Come see me live. Come see me on the road. Blah, 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 blah. That's my me plugging myself. Yeah, I like it. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'm excited to get back into a routine, be back in LA for a little while and get get, get my juice back on. How long are you back for? I'm back for for a while. I don't have like any like hard set gone for weeks kind of plans yeah. uh, coming up. I'm sure I'll it'll it'll kick up again. But. What does your wife do? So my wife works in tech, like she worked for a long time for Snapchat. Um, but right now they fired like a third of everyone at the company. So she's like, are people so used to fucking Snapchat? I don't understand. Young people, their little kids use it. Really? I thought the same thing. I thought it was just for dick pics. It's also for dick pics, but apparently like, <laughs> everyone in, who's like a, a, a teen or preteen, like they all use Snapchat, which is, I don't. I don't get it, but they do. I don't get it either. Yeah, it's weird at all. But Instagram is the best dating app. Not that you're. New app do you have anymore. pre-saved dick pics? No. You'll take them on the fly. I've taken videos of um, like me fucking girls and stuff. Not me jacking <laughs> off. Uh, I mean, no, but girls do like. You know what girls love? I realize love? is when you jerk off in front of them. Some girls. Yeah. yeah. Takes the, they're like, I don't have to do Just this. Give me a cold one. Yeah, give me a cold one. You had wild cherry. That's banana. Ooh. Oh, and shout out Magic Wine. So I love, I love shrooms. These little guys right here. It's filled with like, um, dog cum. Yeah, dog cum, uh, <laughs> regular cum, all types of cum. All types, types of cum that eventually turns green. Yeah, yeah. It's a boost energy focus it's called Magic Wine. Uh, basically, I take it instead of my Adderall, like I said before. Nice. Uh, and every morning, I take it with my coffee. It's the best. I like imagining that, like. Because I feel like a lot of people take Adderall as a drug, right? Oh, it's a party? And I used to take it like in college to like do finals and stuff. But then I would like go back to my dorm and like be organizing my closet. <laughs> and like, I'd be like, I'm like, is this how people are all the time? I'm like, it makes, I realized, I was like, oh, I need it. Like, yeah, I'm not, yeah. like it's not a drug for me. It's like, I'm not taking this for fun. I need it to be like a functional adult. Yeah. And then now I like imagining taking that away and instead... Microdosing, <laughs> <laughs> and I go and I check out my closet, and it's like, whoa. Yeah, I need some more. I didn't acid know I owned jackets, all like Gosling. Space Jam jerseys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> apparently I only own Space Jam jerseys. Toon Squad, Toon Squad, Toon Squad. I have a Toon Squad, Lola. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> I already knew. You didn't <laughs> tell me. I already knew. What's I just uh, before we? What, what are we doing on time? Oh, uh, an hour ten. Hour ten. All right, sweet. I got one last question for you. I okay. want the craziest. Uh, your character. Do you have a character you've been working on? 
Uh, do you have a character we can do a little? Uh, um, character? A little role play? I, I don't know. I'll the, tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, the Bluetooth guy was fucking hilarious. Oh, I shit. saw. As far like as that, the, I have a scene. You want a scene? I'm not as good at oh, keeping a, a straight face. But. I have I have a good I have a good story that I think I could uncork okay. for you guys. That is the one of the most fucked up things. Um, this is fucked up. <laughs> have you told it before? This, this may no. This makes me look really bad. It's perfect. So this is the way we're gonna terror. phrase this yep. is this is a story of something my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was not me. Okay. That did this. Okay. That was my friend that did this. Yep. In um, college he was hooking up with this girl and this is true because I saw it with my own dick oh, <laughs> no okay. with my own ass. no so I um, was hooking up with this girl and she, it got to the point where it's like time we, we've escalated to we're gonna fuck right? yeah she's like I can't fuck I'm on my period right now I got a, got a tampon in you know what I mean I don't yeah. want to pull the plug on that thing. it's already in there and she's like and so he was like you know what we could do that doesn't have a tampon in it is your butt. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh, yeah, I guess I never thought of that. I guess I do have my butt does not have a tampon in it even <laughs> at all. And so, uh, you know, now gives that the old one, two punch. Uh, <laughs> we're, and then they're they're uh, fucking in the butt and he's his dick slips out. And without looking, he simply thrust back in. Unfortunately, though, did not go into the butt. He musket stuffed the tampon <laughs> That's all what that the is. way up. A musket stuff is when you accidentally fuck that tampon oh, all no. the way. And he said that the noise that she made was like when Old Yeller gets put down at the end of the movie. Like, no way. It was like a dog yelping. It was rough. <laughs> and that's, not, <laughs> that's not the joke, but... Uh, he had, yeah, had to go to like urgent care with her to like get it because he was trying to fish it out. He was because it was up. He went. He was trying all, to fish it with his fingers out back? all the way up. Could not get it out all the way up there, all the way jammed up there. Could not get hold of that string. Was up there, and had to go. You almost got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Almost, I like couldn't even. Yeah, it was like I don't even know. It must have got lodged in there. Yeah, a rough way, but yeah, musket stuffing. Uh, <laughs> Musket stuff. So that's a that's a PSA <laughs> out there to all to all your to all the horny young lads who watch your pod. Don't just don't just do that. Keep it to the butt. Just fuck her butt. Just fuck, <laughs> fuck her butt, and then make sure you don't slip out. So really go balls deep in there. All right. Don't yeah. just do the tip. You because you might slip out next. Time I you like know. it in the ass. No. <laughs> Clip I, it. No. Clip it. <laughs> Clip it. Uh, I like it. Um, you, it's tighter. Oh yeah, it rocks. It's tighter. And but when she's about to come though, and like from the regular vagina, when it like pulsates and vibrates, like there's nothing oh, yeah. better when you're eating out a girl, and or your wife, uh, and you like, you feel her like pulsate a little when like, and mm-hmm. it's like you're you have full control of her. Love it. I'm into it too. Yeah. Slip into the DMs on this pod and tell us if you. Uh, I'm saying all this after it, it, I want it, one smooch for the rest of my life. You want one smooch, but you want one. Um, good smooch. Um, it's going to be good. Contracting butthole, too. Yeah. It's got to be a really good contracting butthole, though. It, that's 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 my one bugaboo. <laughs> yes. That's uh, your one bugaboo? One bugaboo. You only have one? No, she's got to have nice teeth. Yeah. No, no English girls for you, huh? No. Yeah. Actually, the girl was English last night. Um, quick character. I want to see a character. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of what I got in my. Uh, uh, I have a really. I have a character that I thought of for the. Um, or what's Friday the scene? We'll do the scene that if you have a scene. No, I mean, it was actually another like 2014. I was like, if you were 2014, you trying to pick up Marco. Oh yeah. And I'm just a girl in 2014, yeah. just floating just around. A girl in 2014. Am I just like at the mall at like fucking you're Claire's? Yeah. You're, you're I'm at Claire's. Get my ears pierced. I'm mm-hmm. at Hollister just shopping around. Right. You know what? It's like really loud. Okay. Like, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just picking out my tank tops. Yeah, Becky, I'll meet you in the dressing room. Just going to peruse the aisles over here. Same here, Becky. I'm just kidding. I don't even I don't even really know Becky. Yeah, this is Josh. And uh, hey. Hey, what's up? You in the Vampire Weekend? The band? Uh, or the day of the week. The band's great. Oh, yeah, I love that. Great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How'd you... How, uh, how'd yeah. you know? Oh, sorry. I didn't, my notice, I didn't even notice it. I, knew, I honestly, I wasn't even looking at your... 
your sweet boobs. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I know, no, I didn't. Uh, What's no. your name? Uh, my name is Luke. Uh, I have a business card that says I'm an improviser. So that would have been a move that I that's that cute. I was, yeah, so Becky, I'll be right there. Becky will be in there in a minute. I'm kidding. I still don't know Becky. It's just something I You're heard cute. you say. Thank you so much. These old rags. I say that. So, so you want to come see one of my improv shows? Because that was uh, 100% one of the things I would do. I'd be like, you should come see my improv show. <laughs> and then I'd be like, would they say yes? Now you want, oh, they would. It's okay. you'd say fucked yes. up that that would work. <laughs> it was, it's like Wait, improv dark. Shows. And then they'd come see the show, and then, and then, uh, then would we, you well, we'd hang at the bar. We'd oh yeah, yeah. Bar. I love just hanging at the bar after shows. Post show bar hang was is when you when you know you're like there's something that comes with the confidence of like you saw me kill it. You saw me kill it. You saw me kill it. And you see people coming up to me saying I killed it. So now you want to suck my cock. That's exactly. It's part of it. It's yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen Vampire Weekend? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the opening line. Is, you you into Vampire Weekend? <laughs> I have a poster on my wall and I have their second album on vinyl but I don't have a record player <laughs> so we can look at it <laughs> we can look at it so you can check it out oh uh, we took too much of your time any uh, where can we find you on socials anything upcoming you know I'm gonna end up putting out a special I filmed a special at the end of last year in uh, at Dynasty Typewriter here in LA we're in the editing process right now it's gonna be out um, hopefully in the next hopefully soon but the editing process has been on. Let's um, go. But You're, it's coming soon. But name's Luke Null. I'm on all the all the platforms. As very well. talented. We're gonna do a show together. Absolutely. I'll we be should. all over it. Especially if you know little Jeffy Die. Oh Jeffy Die. I'm hosting a show tomorrow night at the improv. Are you? Yeah. I oh, love me some love Jeff, me some Jeff Die. Die. Shout out Jeff Die. Jeff Die. Before we leave really fast. Yes. Jeff Die at a bar one time. Uh uh he made me baby bird him a shot of whiskey. So he was like, you take a shot and like regurgitate it into my mouth in front of these girls that were trying to fuck him. So these girls were trying to fuck Jeff Die, And I'm just, I wasn't in, you know, I, I was like, I was helping Jeff out. Not yeah. that he needed help in any way. But Jeff had me without really prompting him. He was like, just baby bird me a shot when these girls are talking to me. So I take a shot and I <laughs> come over and I baby bird him. And these girls are, horrified by it <laughs> <laughs> they think it's si the most psychotic thing they've ever seen they are instantly visually like repulsed by him instantly they're just like oh no <laughs> oh, way whoa whoa no uh and they hated it but we had it on video too so i gotta show you when I, and then i we, re we recreated it and then he was showing girls the video the video and they were like oh hate that <laughs> Don't do that. Psych. Yeah, he could. And then he would he would ask them if they wanted uh, that he wanted to do it to them. He goes, I'll do this to you, but you have to choose Lickies or Sollies. <laughs> <laughs> Lickies or Sollies oh, was, our, was, was a, one of I'd, our. I'd pay a hefty amount of money to get fucking baby bird if I Jeff die. Dude, I, here's the thing. I've only ever been the mama bird to him he's never he's never baby birded me i've only ever spit into jeff die's mouth only time will tell well as of right now <laughs> all right thank you luke no for coming out smoochy town shout out purple banter happy dad magic mind and uh i don't know let's do some butt stuff later what do you say let's do butt stuff guys it's 2024 let's live let's live 2014 coming right at you thank you guys i've been on the road i've been doing shows now we ain't staying remember sleeping on the floor